everyone loves a good turnaround story. Sean and I are both graduates of Marshall University, mm -hmm. which if you know anything about their football program, has one of the greatest turnaround stories ever, right? Uh, the entire football team was tragically killed in a plane crash. Uh, during that time, the school decided that they may not even go on with the athletic program, but mm -hmm. they decided to do that. And then they kept building and building and building. By the time the 90s come, they were one of the, one of the winningest football programs in Division One. Actually won a couple of national championships in Division One A. So the turnaround was complete, right? From ashes to glory, they turned it completely around. Hi, I'm Shauna. This is my husband, Pete, and we're Gallahue Family Discipleship. We're both ordained ministers with the Church of God, and we're inviting you into our home <coughs> to study the Bible. This week, we are starting uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, and today it's verses 1 through 3. I'm going to read those, and then we'll get started with the discussion. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God for the time past of our life has suffi sufficed us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. So here Peter says, when you become a Christian, you don't act like you used to act. No. Nope. Right? You no longer do those things that you used to do. There's a turnaround, right? In the previous verses that we talked about, he talked about the gospel message, what Jesus Christ did for us. Now he's telling us what the power of that gospel message is. Mm -hmm. That's to transform us, to change us, to where we no longer pursue the sinful desires. I think it says in verse 2 that we no longer should live the rest of their time in the flesh to the lust of men. We no longer pursue those things. We're different. That's right. You know, um, it is the beginning of the year. Um, it is the beginning of January, and we all look at the calendar. We all look at time, um, and we say, this is a new beginning, a new start. What is your New Year's resolution? And uh, for every one of us, we should always resolve to follow after the will of God. Um, it's not about... Um, necessarily making yourself better physically if you don't pursue making yourself better spiritually uh, because we need to be who God has called us to be um, and we need to be that first that's our priority and then all those things follow after right and the thing about it is is we can't do it on our own mm-hmm if we could do it on our own, we wouldn't need Jesus in our hearts, in our lives. But we cannot do it upon our own. Uh, we have to have the empowering of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling within us to give us power to overcome this world, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus said he died to make us more than overcomers. So we, we can overcome the sin that is in our lives. Uh, the book of First John says that when we become saints, that he empowers us to overcome our sinful desires, to conquer them, right? And that's only through Jesus Christ, the power that he gives us to do those things. We can't do it upon our own, and we need him in our lives to overcome these sinful things that he talks about. Because he says, you know what, you used to do like the Gentiles. You used to pursue the drunkenness, the, uh, the banqueting, the partying, the idolatry. All these things, you did those in the past. And we can say we did those in the past, but not now. We're new creatures. That's right. Um, I love that the scripture will remind us over and over that we are new uh, because the devil will continually try to remind you of who you used to be, mm -hmm. of what you used to do, uh, what you used to say, what how bad your relationships were, or um <clears throat> What kind of encounters you used to have. Habits. And that's right. What kind of habits you had. The devil will remind you. But if you get into the word of God, it will remind you of who you have been made as a child of God now. Mm -hmm. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You know, you've been redeemed. You've been set free, restored. You've been made new. You now have been picked up, set on the path that God always intended for you because Jesus is the Lord of your life. And the will of God is what you desire. Right. We're a royal priesthood, right? That's right. The royal priesthood, mm -hmm. which means that we have authority within a kingdom and we're servants of God, right? Mm -hmm. Where our job is to minister to him. And we have to realize that we're no longer the same person we used to be. Uh, going forward, we want to remind you there's four things a disciple of Jesus Christ will do every day. That's exalt God, encounter God, edify yourself by reading the word of God, and engage this world for Jesus Christ. It is the year for us to overcome what was with what is in Jesus Christ. Until next time, God bless.